Welcome to the Morrison Report. Hosted by Deval Morrison, sales representative for Bosley Real Estate Limited Brokerage. Ms. Morrison has co-authored the best-selling book, Success Today, with Brian Tracy, and has been interviewed on NBC, ABC, and CBS affiliates by Bob Guinea from The Bachelor. Deval, a real estate investor, has spoken to many attendees at her real estate seminars and is currently ranked in the top 5% of agents in her brokerage. Join me in welcoming your host, Deval Morrison. Thanks everyone for joining us today on the podcast. Michelle Bennett is here with us, and she is an interior designer who prides herself on making the sometimes stressful process of decorating as fun and enjoyable as possible. She strives to make every interaction with her clients one they absolutely look forward to. Thanks so much for joining us, Michelle. Thank you so much for having me back. I appreciate it. No problem. So you're going to tell us today about some decorating mistakes that you see people making often. Yes. So on our last talk, we talked about the main, the big mistake that people made, which is not planning your project. So if anybody missed that podcast, that's a great one to kind of figure out how you can plan your project. But today I was thinking we could talk about the five mistakes that people actually make in their home when it comes to actually decorating their space. So I was thinking we would call these design crimes. So we're going to go over five design crimes that people make. So how does that sound? Okay, that sounds great. Design crimes. Love it. Let's go. (laughs) Design crimes, yes. All right, design crime number one, hanging art too high. So I'm sure you have seen this in some of the homes. For whatever reason, when people hang their art wrong, they never hang it too low. Like that's never something I've seen, but it's always hung too high. So there's two very simple guidelines that people can follow. Now, it's like everything. There's always exceptions to every rule, but 90% of the time, these guidelines make sense. And there's other guidelines in addition, but these two are two that you can keep in your back pocket whenever you're hanging your art. So the first one is just making sure that if you're hanging art above a piece of furniture, so let's say it's a credenza, a couch, like a sideboard, or whatever it is, if it's a piece of furniture that's more than 30 inches, then what you want to do is hang it about 8 to 10 inches above that piece of furniture. So basically the goal is to make that that art feel like a cohesive piece with whatever furniture or chair even that's sitting in front of it. So I kind of think of decorating in like vignettes, if you will. So basically you want that art to feel like part of whatever's going on below it. So what a lot of people do is they hang it too high and it feels kind of like it's floating away or it just feels like completely disjointed from whatever's going on. So that's number one. So would um, and then if you're hanging something... So would you say that uh, sorry, it needs to be sort of eye level? Is that what you're kind of saying? It, well, it's a little different. Eye level is what you want to do when you're hanging something on a bare wall or yep. if you're hanging something above furniture that's less than 30 inches. And what's difficult with eye level is my eye level <laughs> might be very different than your eye level and right. you know, my partner's eye level. So a rule of thumb for that is really having the middle of the frame so so if it's one picture that you're hanging, the middle of that one picture should be around 56 to 59 inches from the floor. Yep. If you're hanging a group of pictures, you actually want to treat a group of pictures as one big picture. So you're going to find the middle point of the group of pictures with the 56 to 59 inches. So it, it's really kind of, you know, something that you want to test it. Out. And the way I recommend testing it out before, because the thing is, you don't want to put a bunch of holes in your wall and then realize, oh, crap, I hung it too high, I hung it right. too low, it's not really working. So what I suggest is if you buy, a piece, like let's say you buy a frame from Ikea, for example, you'll notice that when you open up the frame, there's a piece of paper, basically the size, more or less, of the frame that you're about to hang. Okay. So if you take, take that piece of paper out, tape it on the wall, so use painter tape because we don't want to obviously mess up the paint on our wall. You can actually tape it on to the wall using these guidelines. So again, it's 56 to 59 inches in the middle of the frame. If you're hanging it above a low piece of furniture or on a wall with nothing else, and then you're hanging it 8 to 10 inches above a piece of furniture that's 30 inches or more. Hmm. And the thing with the 8 to 10 inches is the smaller the frame, the higher you're going to go. So you're going to kind of push it to the 10 inches. And if it's a really small piece of art, you might go a little higher. Right. If it's a bigger piece of art, then, then that you go on the lower end of that range. But what's 
great is you can basically just tape these inserts onto the wall that you find in a, in a frame that you're purchasing and actually kind of take a step back, really get a feel, um, you know, maybe double touch your measurements. And then what I like to do is actually leave it there for a couple of days, maybe even a week, because I like to just let it kind of do its thing. Like, am I really? feeling it in a week? Yeah, it's cool. Let's do it. <laughs> let's, See, for me, let's put the hole in the wall. Let's go for it. I find I'm sort of of the impatient What's variety. That? And once I finally get around to doing something like hanging something, I basically just want to get it done all in one shot. It's just like, let me get it up. Let me be done with this. So I just don't have to come back and do it again. Totally. And, and you know what? And that's fine too. And if you don't have to wait the week, that's kind of for somebody who's feeling a bit uneasy. Yeah. But as long as you're following the guidelines, I, I do recommend camping it on the wall, taking a step back. And then, you know, making sure it feels right. If it feels right, then commit to the hole on the wall. So <laughs> this is kind of like a really easy way to make sure that you're not putting holes all over your wall or just hanging your arm too high or too low. And what do you think about that sticky tape? You know, like there's this stuff that I got from Home Depot that's Velcro. So it's a Velcro okay. thing that sticks to the wall and then it's Velcro that sticks to your painting. And so that way you're just putting mm-hmm. Velcro to Velcro on the wall so you're not actually you know, putting in any nails or screws into the wall. What do you think about something like that? I have definitely done that, actually. I've done that with, a long time ago, I had the painted trays. They were really lightweight. They were, I don't even know, I think I got them at home then. And I, and they, they were like a pink and a green, you know, college. I had ideas of pink and green <laughs> in my apartment. Yeah. But anyways, I was like, you know what? I'm not going to use these as trays. I'm going to actually hang them on the wall. And I did the Velcro thing because what I liked about that was it, it wasn't a commitment to a hole that I did wrong. I was able to unstick it and restick it until it was perfect. Right. So I think that is a great option, especially when you're hanging more than one piece of art. Um, yeah. I've seen it done where a bunch of mirrors kind of hung like, you know, let's call it like you know, 16 of them um, in a square. And I've seen people use Velcro to kind of play with it because that's a really hard thing to do with a nail and make sure that it's all straight. So I've definitely seen people do that and I think that's a great way to do it too. Great, awesome. But at the end of the day, you just want to make sure because I've I've actually done this myself where I've put way too many holes. Luckily, they've ended up being behind the frame that I've been hanging. But I'm like, why didn't I plan this better? So I'm also guilty of this from time to time. But it, it is really good. It's like anything. It's like the last podcast where we chatted about planning. It's just planning, planning, planning that we right. don't make mistakes. Makes sense. All right. So we, do we want to talk about design crime number two? Sure. Go for it. Design crime number two is hanging your curtains too tight to your window. Do you know it's so funny? Before <laughs> so, we got on this call. Well, because, of course, you know, every crime that you're talking about so far is definitely a crime that I've committed. I've definitely been guilty <laughs> of hanging my pictures too high. I've had an architect yeah. friend come over and be like, what are you doing? And now as you talk about the <laughs> curtains, I just literally, before we got on the call, finished hanging some curtains. And my handyman was here in the house by himself, so I wasn't there to direct him, but... He put it, yeah, very close to the window. And now I, I don't care. I'm just going to leave it that way. It's my spare bedroom. It doesn't matter. No, and I, I, get, I get it. And that's why it pains my heart when I go into a client's house and I see it just really tight to the frame, like really right on that frame. And I'm like, you know, I know that unless we're working together, you're probably not. <laughs> but if we're working together, that is getting fixed. But basically when you're hanging your curtains you really want to create the illusion that your window is bigger than it is it's kind of like everything you always want your room to feel bigger you want your windows to feel bigger so this is a way to kind of create the illusion that you've got big tall windows okay now obviously depending on your house you might there might be there's always again there's exceptions to every rule sometimes the architecture of your space uh, where the window is on the wall doesn't allow for that but when you can you want to try to take the rod about four to six inches above the window frame so (laughs) <laughs> An easier way to look at it is space. That's not what happened, is it? No, it's not. <laughs> it's like, that's right not a frame, frame, it? I'm like, wow. As you keep <laughs> talking, I'm just thinking of how badly I messed up with this windowsill and how much you're just not, you would not. I know. It. We should have talked two hours ago. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so what you want to do is basically you could just look at the middle. So where your frame ends and where the ceiling starts, you could just take it to the middle of those two, um, of that space. 
Sometimes people will actually mount the frame with like a, a ceiling rod as well, which is, can, can look really well and look really good in modern. But yeah, you want to take it six, four to six inches above the frame. But not only that, you also want to extend the rod three to six inches on either side of the frame. Mm-hmm. And what's great about this is, yeah, it makes the window look bigger, <laughs> but it also allows more light to come in because when the curtain's actually hanging, right. it's only covering a small portion of the window as opposed to, you know, the entire curtain panel width of the window. So you're letting way more natural light into your room, which, as obvious, as we all know, is really good. We want all the natural light we can get. Right. So you basically, you've got more natural light and you've got a window that looks and feels bigger. And to be honest, it just frames the window in a nicer way as well. So, I so did. the next time you buy your curtains, <laughs> we're going to make sure that we tell the contract. This is the other thing I worry about is when I talk to clients too, is contractors are great, but contractors are just, Definitely not designers. Um, yeah. And you know what they think looks good. I'm very, I'm very weary of you know making sure when contractors are working with my clients that you know I'm giving very clear direction on where to hang things. Whether it's you know if you're hanging a light or adding a new sconce on a on a wall or whatever that is, I'm I'm very I love the contractors, but I, I very much like you know let's make sure we talk so that I kind of give them the right aesthetic and make sure that we're we're, we're doing the right thing. Yep, that makes sense because sounds so like that make sense? Yeah. yeah, cause absolutely everything that you said, I uh, pretty much did wrong. Whether it's the, you know, too uh-oh. close to the top of the window, too close to the sides of the window. Yeah, pretty much everything that you said there, I did completely wrong. Oh, you know what? Design crimes, they're happening every day. All <laughs> <laughs> okay, so design crime number three is basically buying the wrong size furniture. Okay. So, This one actually is kind of what we talked about when we talked the last time on on the last podcast, but it's really all boiled down to poor planning. And the thing with buying your own size furniture is that most of the time what happens is people just kind of go, well, crap, like this is it now. And then they have to live with this furniture that's too big. And what what a lot of people think is, well, my room isn't too big, but I'm going to go as big as I can with my furniture because I think they believe that that's going to make the space feel bigger. Right. But you want to have the appropriate size furniture so that if there's enough breathing room all around the furniture, which really does actually make it feel bigger and more spacious. So, and then on the flip side, it, if you decide, well, I can't live with it, well, you're gonna you're gonna lose your money if you can't return the piece because nobody's gonna buy it for whatever you paid for it. That's of just course. Kind of, and we all know how that goes, right? So. In order to kind of avoid this this design crime, you really want to measure. So this is one of those things where I get that people don't love to take the extra time that it takes to plan. But the way I try to look at it and tell people is, you know what, it might take you two to three times as long to do the planning of whatever furniture you want to buy and figuring out what size it is. But most people are going to live with that furniture for at least five years. So it's kind of like short-term pain for the long-term gain of making sure that you just love it for the next five years. So so you're going to basically measure your room. You're going to take all, all the measurements of your room, and then you're going to draw your floor plan. And I recommend just using online programs, which are totally free. The one I like to use is Roomle.com, and it's R-O-O-M-L-E.com. Okay. And it's amazing. It's a really easy program to use. And like I said, it's free, not affiliated. I get nothing. I get no kickbacks for recommending it. It's just a really great program. So what you want to do is draw out basically the size of your room. You want to think about where your windows are, where your doorways are, all that good stuff, because you also want to think about how your door is open and making sure that there's enough space for that. But basically then, once you have your floor plan drawn, you're going to then use your catalog of furniture to drag in whatever it is you're thinking in your in your mind about what that space should look like, what you need it to be. Right. And then when you figure out what furniture you have in it, you can actually change the size of the furniture to be the appropriate size that that fits the space. But the key here is making sure you're realistic. Like if you're if you're trying to put in a chair, like an armchair then maybe a 12 inch by 12 inch armchair is not realistic. So what I like to do is kind of play around with the furniture and then I kind of go validate, you know, if I've gone a bit small and I know it's like, Ooh, is this even a realistic size? I'll go maybe on, you know, westdome.com and check out their smallest chair and make sure that these chair sizes actually exist. 
And right. then when you figure out your floor plan, then you can actually start looking for furniture in that size. Cool. What's great about this is it really minimizes your decision making. So the biggest thing too with decorating that people struggle with is all of the decisions. So once you're once you know that your couch might be six feet wide, 